Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And here we have it, the first 2018 review for you on the channel, and it comes from Volkswagen. The 2017 model year marks the final year for the Touareg. According to Volkswagen, it just wasn't big enough. So, enter the Atlas. Volkswagen has been shifting around the chest pieces for quite some time in preparation for this car. Development started on it back in 2012, and it's no coincidence that in 2014, the ill-fated Rutan minivan was dropped from the Volkswagen lineup, because Volkswagen hopes that this can bridge the gap between the rather cool looks of an SUV and the practicality of a minivan. And I have to say, this thing has a lot of very family-friendly features packed into it, so let's hop on board and see if the Atlas is ready for for that very competitive mid-size SUV segment here in North America. Well, one thing I want to talk about right away with the Atlas are the looks of this car because I've actually heard from a number of people online saying that they think that it kind of looks boxy and dull and already kind of looks a little bit dated, but I know looks are a very subjective thing. My take on it though is that it, it does look a little bit boring compared to some of its competitors, but if we compare it to the Mazda CX-9 or the Toyota Highlander or the Ford Explorer, which maybe look a little bit edgier, I think that this one is actually going to stand the test of time a bit better. I think it's not going to look quite as dated 10 years from now. Now one thing that you look at with this car right away and think, oh, that's pretty good is its base price, which is just over $36,000 up here in Canada. But if you look a little deeper, that base price eh, doesn't really include a lot of things that you'll be looking for in this car. First up, you're getting only a two liter turbocharged power plant on board that base trim. It's a four cylinder and for a car of this size, I just don't think it's gonna give you enough oomph. More importantly though, if you get that two liter power plant, you're only able to get a front wheel drive drivetrain on board and that kind of writes off that lower level trim for pretty much any Canadian out there. We want all wheel drive in our SUVs and that bumps you up into the V6 power plant. It gives you a 3.6 liter V6 putting out 276 horsepower and all of a sudden all wheel drive comes standard on all trims. So let's kind of use that as our baseline with this vehicle just shy of $40,000 and on that base trim with the V6 and all wheel drive on board you're getting three rows of seating. You're getting Volkswagen Wagon's App Connect smartphone system, which gives you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You're getting six and a half inch touchscreen, and you're getting a rear backup camera as well, important with a car of this size, as well as 18 inch alloy wheels. Now there are a few trims between that base model and this exec line trim that we're driving around here this week. And along the way, you're getting things added to those trims like leather, a panorama sunroof, automatic climate control, ventilated front seats, power adjustable front seats, seats, heated second row seats, a power tailgate, autonomous braking, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, remote start, even an alarm doesn't come standard on the base trim. So it's a pretty basic vehicle at $40,000, but there are certain things that I know people are going to be really keen to see come on all models like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and of course on the V6 models, all wheel drive as well. And with all these bells and whistles as tested here this week, we're coming in at just over $53,000, which is flirting up into Volvo XC90 territory and even a little bit more than that top of the line signature trim that we just rave about in the Mazda CX-9. Now at that price, of course, you're going to want to have pretty good attention to detail. And when I stepped into the interior here, my initial response was, oh yeah, it looks really good. But then I started running my hands across some of the surfaces and I was really disappointed to encounter some pretty clunky, cheap feeling plastics, really cut rate materials in places around the door handles here, in here in this, around the center console. It doesn't feel as high end once you start running your hand across things as I'd hoped. But one thing that really drew my eye with this interior as soon as I stepped on board was Volkswagen's digital cockpit right in front of me here in the instrument cluster. It reminds me a lot, no coincidence here, of the sister company of Volkswagen, Audi, and their virtual cockpit system, which I've tested in the Q7. I think it's the best on the market. This is pretty similar. It's entirely customizable. It's entirely digital. It looks really slick, really clear. But my beef with this instrument cluster is that while most systems out there right in front of the driver are kind of tilted like, you know, this toward the driver, 
driver. This one is almost sort of reverse tilted on this really bizarre angle, which is kind of hard on the eye. And see, it seems weird that Volkswagen did that. There are some weird things with the infotainment system. Like here in this optional eight inch infotainment system, which comes on the higher level trims, it's a beautiful big screen, but I can't pack much information onto that screen in one view. Like for example, I can't view my navigation, my phone information, the radio station I'm listening to, and climate control in a one-stop shop. Ford and Kia have that dialed in nicely. I think Volvo's done a good job of it too, but so many other companies haven't figured out that we kind of want to have a one-stop, easy-to-view shop on these great big screens that are now coming out on the market. Now, despite those little beefs with the infotainment system, Volkswagen's giving you a really clean, minimalist interior here while still giving you the switchware and buttons that you need all the time and really easy access points. Like the dual zone climate control is right here where you'd expect it to be. I don't have to take my eyes off the road much to use it. My one beef with this though is like, check out, in this such a big vehicle, how tiny the uh, temperature readout is for the dual zone climate control. It's like some of us are gonna have to pull out our reading glasses in order to actually check out what temperature we're setting our vehicle to. Give us a slightly bigger readout there, Volkswagen. That seems crazy to me. One thing I think Volkswagen though has done a really good job of with the Atlas is its general ride comfort. I mean, everything from seat comfort, which is a little soft compared to a lot of the other, you know, European vehicles out there, BMWs, Audis, even Volkswagens. This has been tailored toward a North American audience. So North Americans often prefer slightly softer seats. That's gonna be a personal preference thing. But also ride comfort is really good. It's not super floaty through the corners. It is a little bit harsh when you go over a big speed bump or over a pothole or something but you know you kind of have to forgive that a bit because it is sitting up pretty high and unlike the outgoing Touareg which did have an optional height adjustability in its suspension this is you know one height and that's it now one thing you do have here in the Atlas with models that are equipped with all-wheel drive is this terrain select function so you can select everything from snow mode to off-roading mode to eco mode to sport mode but it's not adjusting the height like we saw in the Touareg instead you're adjusting things like throttle response like shifting patterns in the transmission mission, the way the vehicle's braking, stability control, that sort of thing. The end result is a vehicle which feels really comfortable on the highway, but is also pretty capable off-road and would be a great vehicle for, uh, you know, snowy driving heading out into the mountains as well. Now, speaking of the transmission in the Atlas, perhaps my favorite thing in the powertrain of this vehicle is this eight-speed automatic. It's so smooth. It shifts really nicely. It doesn't shift unnecessarily. It finds a gear when you're even going up a steep grade on highways that works for it and it kind of sticks to it. It's a really nicely tuned transmission. But then, unfortunately, you get to the engine. And even though this tester here has the larger 3.6 liter V6 on board, it puts out 276 horsepower. On paper, it sounds like it's gonna be good enough, but it's pretty dull. It's, it's, it's exceptionally dull when it's in eco mode, but even in sport mode, when you do adjust all of those different things to make it come alive a little bit more, you you know put your foot on the gas and you expect something, and it's, it's just not that, exhilarating to drive. We compare this to the Mazda CX-9, which does have a smaller engine, or the Volvo XC90. There are a lot of other vehicles out there in this category that I think make this feel like it's just a bit boring to drive around. Meanwhile, fuel economy is also kind of lackluster. On a mixture of highway and city roads this week, we've averaged about 10.7 liters per 100 kilometers, which is certainly not the worst that we've seen, but it's not the best either. And when you're dealing with a car like this that is not that interesting to drive, at least give me some better fuel economy numbers. One thing I was pleased to see is that all V6 models of this vehicle do come standard with a towing package, and you can tow 5,000 pounds with the Atlas which puts it right on par with the rest of this segment. Now the midsize SUV segment is an interesting one because there's a real size range among the Atlas's competitors, but this is certainly on the fatter end. At five meters long, this thing is a honker, but 
both Devin and I commented this week that it doesn't feel as big as it actually is when you're driving along until you get yourself into some really tight shopping mall parking lot, at which point that standard rear backup camera and the 360 degree bird's eye view camera that we have here on this exec line trim really shine. And then on top of that, in the two highest level trims of the Atlas, you also have 12 ultrasound parking sensors wrapped around this vehicle, which give you a really accurate sense for how close you're getting to that $100,000 Porsche parked right next to you. But if you really just hate parking altogether and you want the vehicle to do it on its own, here in the exec line trim, we also have this park assist function, which not only parallel parks for you, but it also forward parks and even backs into a parking spot if you want it to. Pretty slick technology and I suspect that with all of this stuff looking out for you in a parking lot we're gonna be seeing some atlases parked in some pretty tight parking spots in the years ahead all right so let's recap here with the Atlas it's not the most fuel efficient it's not the best performer we have some fit and finish and materials that don't quite match up at its price point in the higher level trims with some similarly priced competitors but you know what I climb back here into the second and third rows and some of those concerns kind of melt away because as a family man, I am so impressed at what Volkswagen has done here. They've done exactly what they hope to do, which is to give you SUV styling with minivan comfort here in the second row. Holy cow, I'm six foot two, lots of headroom and my legroom, even though I've kept my driver's seat for, you know, position to what I would normally drive in as a tall driver is just copious as well. I've talked before about how these buildings built-in sun visors like we've seen on some of the other competitors are worth their weight in gold. Those are fantastic to see. But my favorite feature of all here in this vehicle is how you can access the third row as a tall adult really comfortably. You pull this lever right here and not only does the seat slide forward, it actually pivots on itself, meaning that you can still keep a car seat here in the second row and have really easy access to that third row, which is also ridiculously spacious, offering you up 25 inches inches of legroom. To keep that in perspective, that's a little bit more legroom than we see in the Honda CRV, which is actually a pretty spacious vehicle in its own right. So with all that, it kind of goes without saying that car seats are not going to be a problem for you. Front facing, Roger has had oodles of room this week. Rear facing, flip this car seat around, and we've seen some of the best numbers in the Atlas that I've ever seen with our test, which is measuring from the back of the front seat cushion up to the glove box, 31 inches available there. That's going to give you tons of room even for tall adults. Now one thing I'm not so crazy about in our test vehicle here in the second row is this optional captain style seating which costs an extra $625. You lose one position for seating so it becomes a six passenger vehicle rather than a seven passenger vehicle. Say you've got a large family dog and you want to sort of create that natural barrier that a traditional bench style seating would create so they don't jump over and bother you while you're driving. Well you lose that. You also lose the ability to kind of keep groceries back there. You know, if you break suddenly, the groceries are going to come spilling up into the front part of the cabin. And if you do want to try and fit five people back here, then you're going to have to give up a bunch of your trunk space and because uh, you have to use part of your third row. So really, if it were my money, avoid these captain seats. It's a much more usable vehicle when you don't go down this road at all. Now, while the passenger space impresses me in this car, it's actually its cargo capacity, which I find even more remarkable. 583 liters of stuff can fit behind that third row when it's flipped up. That's huge. It means that our standardized trunk test of a stroller, a backpack, a diaper bag, a couple of bags of groceries, and a basketball fit back there with no problem. But it's once you flip that third row down that things get really impressive. We have our standardized gear back there with enough room to spare for a couple of Great Danes, if you wanted them still. That's even more cargo capacity than the Chevy Tahoe, which seems like a much larger vehicle than this. And it also dethrones the Honda Pilot, which is known for its cargo capacity in the midsize SUV segment. This thing is like a clown car. It's one of those magical vehicles that seems to just have space where you wouldn't expect it to be. Lots of room in this vehicle for both passengers and all your gear. That's really impressive to me in the Atlas. Well, Canadians love their trucks, 
crossovers, and SUVs. They amount for 68% of year-to-date sales up here in Canada so far for 2017. So it's no surprise that Volkswagen wanted to up their game here on the SUV front. And despite some minor irritations, the Atlas has come ready to fight too with clever design, some really interesting family-friendly features, nice ride as well. Now, if you're already mourning the loss of the more traditionally sized Touareg, Volkswagen says they have a vehicle that's like that being introduced to the European market later on this fall. Now, it's not going to be available here in Canada right away, but maybe, perhaps, eventually down the line, Volkswagen says that we could see it here in this market as well. But for now, it's the much smaller Tiguan, which is also being redesigned for 2018, or this much larger Atlas, which are your options. And there are two really solid options from Volkswagen.